After Grand Theft Alvarado pokes it back to half court with elite wing defender Herb Jones going after the rock as well, Adetokounmpo's palms being 10 by 12 inches allow him to pick up this loose ball in traffic while out muscling Alvarado and out hustling Jones with one hand. That's followed by a drive entry with that off hand and that's followed by a nasty Euro step around Jonas Valanciunas for the deuce. Giannis' 50 points just came on an insane 20 for 26 shooting from the field. Since losing back-to-back -back games against Miami, albeit without Giannis and Middleton, the Milwaukee Bucks have won five of their last six games, rounding into form at the ideal time. We're about to look at how Giannis dominated an albeit beat up New Orleans Pelicans team. The Pelicans have been extremely injury prone all year, by the way, and we're missing three top players in Zion, Ingram, and McCollum. Nevertheless, the Freak put on a show-stopping performance. Stay tuned for a heavy breakdown that, trust me, you won't want to miss, along with much more on 2021's champions. Milwaukee's currently knotted up in the standings with a team we've talked about a tad bit recently in the Philadelphia 76ers for the second seed in the Eastern Conference and just two and a half games back of Boston. Stay tuned for your typically sound Giannis analysis and an in-depth breakdown of how he beasted on the Big Easy, plus why the Bucks as a whole are finding their flow. Right quick, you can resemble the Greek freak savaging down the lane for an opponent's Kodak moment by smashing that sub box and turning on notifications for the YouTube algorithm. Splash thumbs up like your Steph Curry with the shot boy as well for the YouTube algorithm. And let's be friends, follow at Hoops on Instagram. Let's get into it. This early offense spaced out high pick and roll shows you the terrifying gravity that Giannis is finally starting to draw with the threat of his three point shot as he utilizes the Lopez big body before using a brilliant head fake and a lefty in and out move to get Giannis thinking pull up. On a more exciting vibe, this next play somehow wasn't even the best dunk of the night for this man. This displays Giannis' versatility to this time be setting the screen as the roller after just acting as the pick and roll ball handler. Good stop initially on the Grayson drive by New Orleans, but Adetokounmpo instinctively turns his downhill straight line drive into a post-up, receiving the entry before leveraging and twisting off his left pivot foot for the thunderous attack. The most physically dominant player on the face of the earth, the new age Shaquille O'Neal of this era in terms of the fact that he's seven feet tall with viciously long strides in transition, with a head scratchingly poised and under control handle off the bounce for his size, in lieu of Giannis having a maximum 12 foot 2 inch vertical reach and a 7 foot 3 wingspan, plus having completely transformed his body from year 1 to now year 10, the way he's able to fluidly move up and down the court at that size is just amazing. His fluid movement around the court shows up whether he's setting screens as the roller slash DHO guy in the big man's role or following in the footsteps of Magic and LeBron regarding his playmaking, quickly throwing it back to when this lanky kid who had aspirations of being MVP set those goals as early as his rookie year, but reporters just weren't having it. I'm gonna try, try to get him in. I can tell him means something to you. I mean, you, all of a sudden your eyes light up. Yeah, he miss. I want the MVP. <laughs> I want the MVP, yeah. However, being laughed at or thinking he could achieve the utmost amount of success in the association didn't even come close to deterring the dreams of the Greek freak. He only used the doubters who said he could be nothing more than a role player or a screen setter as nothing but straight fuel. Let's be real though, even though he had one standout move where he galloped to the hoop and left everyone speechless back in his early days, I don't think there was a single person on this planet, other than Giannis himself of course, who knew or even assumed that the one 6 point per game score as a rookie, who was extremely raw, could do what he just did on Sunday night, let alone what he's done throughout the 38 games he suited up in this year. In 22-23, Giannis is for some reason only a quiet MVP candidate, averaging a monster league third best best 31.3 points, a league second best 12.4 rebounds to go along with 5.3 assists per night. That dime total would rank him fifth at his position, only ranking behind power forwards Kevin Durant, Pascal Siakam, Draymond Green, and DeMontis Sabonis. But aside from KD, who there's a real debate for when he's healthy, that durability has been a bit of an issue for Durant over the last half decade. In that span, Giannis has entered his prime and established an obvious reputation as the best power forward on the planet. We tend to obsess about what Giannis does on the court, and rightfully so, but maybe the most glaring development he's made throughout the course of his career has come with his maturity level. At one point, a rookie who could speak bits and pieces of the English language, not only has Giannis become a thousand times more cultured since coming over from Europe in 2013's draft, but he's developed a great way of blending an easygoing nature with sharp intensity and necessary tough love. 
which all have slowly but surely made him one of the best leaders in the association. And that leadership doesn't come with always being the guy everybody likes the most, but it comes with being the guy everybody needs the most in order for the Milwaukee Bucks to reach the only goal in their pathway, that being a third championship ring for their prestigiously reputable 55-year-old franchise. In addition to managing this team's mindset as the number one voice, Giannis's ability to manage that aforementioned easygoing nature with necessary, at times intimidating, tough love has a way of keeping his ego right where it needs to be. Of course, it takes a lot of ego for a superstar to be at their best, but when it goes over the top and players start patting their back a little too much or what have you, that can become a major issue for the vibes in the locker room. Most of what I've said so far has been positive other than that last part, but there was a glaring negative stretch that Giannis went through not too long ago where he had 9 points in a loss against Charlotte, then another under 10 point performance against Atlanta, albeit in a win. Many overreacted despite that cold streak then abruptly ending. It was disappointing to see people overreact and hate on him hard, considering how consistent this man usually is. Last time we talked about Giannis's jumper looking swift, I may have jinxed him. Knock on wood and pray to the basketball gods, that isn't the case this time, but smooth one-legged Dirk Nowitzki-esque fades from the foul line like this make me comfortable that Giannis is polishing his shot and putting in reps. This pull-up three in a semi-transition opportunity looks instinctively smooth as hell. Giannis runs it down, thinking he's missed it, but nice looking shot nonetheless. How about back-to-back -back Stephen Curry-esque 25 footers under a late Pelicans closeout to both cap off the game and give this man a 50 piece with quite literally, as Giannis will show you right here, some nuggets to go along with it. Are you gonna say your order? Can I have a 50 piece? Sorry, I will put you, uh, can I put your camera? Do you mind or no? Sure. I just, uh, there's 150,000 people watching you right now. Really? Yes. <laughs> so can I, can I have, please, a 50 piece Mac Minis, 50 exactly, okay. not 51, not chicken 49, minis. chicken minis, yes, 50. And um, let me have a large drink, no ice, half Sprite, half lemonade. Not actually sure if that was a Nuggets order, nevertheless, creative drink selection, just like he combined soda, or as we call it in Canada, pop. Evidently, Giannis is now mixing up his patented downhill explosions like a man possessed with an improving mid-range and distance pull-up shot. This time, I won't drink him. I'll guarantee you that. The Milwaukee Bucks! Because it's how Giannis is perfectly baiting jump shot, then how he's more swiftly than ever luring in the bait by transitioning into full head of steam, galloping attacks to either Euro step, attack on a line drive, spin, or as he slowly but surely, and I mean very slowly but surely added throughout his now approaching decade long tenure as a pro, he's figuring out how to pick his spots effectively and of course time up his shot properly to lock in for scary mid rangers and deep range bombs. The Bucks all around though are heating up. Give credit to the man who completed this championship puzzle when the Bucks traded for him in 2020, Drew Holiday, who's been the healthiest member of the big three so far this season. But Chris Middleton just returned as he's been easing his way back into things coming off the bench and averaging under 16 minutes per game in January. That significantly limited Middleton's production overall on the season, but considering the now fully healthy Bucks are clicking and Chris hasn't even found his rhythm yet, that's a pretty good sign. Don't forget about Joe Ingles, who was a great 3 and D pickup coming over from Utah for this team, whose grittiness and vocal leadership has had a real impact. Going back to the number one option though, and can Giannis's January shooting stroke maintain itself? Why or why not? Get on the community speaks board and compete for merch with your competitive take down below. Today's commenter shout out goes to from 2006 who says, quote, in the last two weeks, four calls have cost the Lakers games. Four calls the NBA came out the next day and said they got wrong. Four calls that have them at the 13th seed instead of the fourth. Four calls that could drastically impact the legacy of some of those players. Four calls that have people labeling them as a lottery team when they're playing like a playoff team. Don't think the average fan realizes the impact one call can have on a whole season. If the Lakers don't make the playoffs because of this, people will never remember, which is a shame. The amount of false narratives around them and their players is truly unreal. I really do blame guys like Skip Bayless. It's genuinely ruined this sport in a way because the toxicity that started with LeBron is now with everyone. 